Hello, everybody, and welcome to Police Test Tutor. My name is Amy Watt, and today we are going to go over behavioral interviews and more specifically how the interview coaching can help you. It's not a cookie cutter approach. As the leading employment interview strategist in Canada, not just for policing, but across the board, um, I've really honed a way to make my clients feel comfortable, reduce anxiety, and allow them to give in-depth interview answers. In our coaching sessions together, you will receive one-on-one -on -one attention, and I really help to connect the dots so that you can present your best self, connecting all of the competencies that the service is looking for. A Google search on how to answer behavioral interview questions will bring up the classic STAR, situation, task, action, result. And clients that use that typically have a very hollow uh, answer that really lacks depth and details. So through this interview coaching, I'm going to teach you how to clearly articulate your past experiences because behavioral interviews are used because your past experiences are a predictor of your future behavior. So you want to show police services that you have the skills that they're looking for. And through this coaching, I don't specifically highlight your strengths because usually those are pretty obvious. What I do is I help you to strengthen your weaknesses, strengthen the bumps in the road that you've had so that you can show what you've learned. As you know, being able to articulate what happened in a clear, concise, and comprehensive manner is important in any field of law enforcement, whether it's correction, special constable, policing, or dispatch, or CBSA. A successful interview is all about embodying the qualities of the ideal candidate and meeting the expectations of the interviewers and what the service is looking for. It's important to keep in mind that those conducting the interview are trained to pay attention to details. And these interviews are unlike any other job interviews because you have to disclose interviews that you have been unsuccessful in. So um, not passing will follow you. Why leave it to chance? You really need to prepare. It's not something that you can wing. And a little history about behavioral interviews, because they're certainly not new. They have been around for about 20 years, way back. You know, for example, police services used to be very simple. You know, tell me a time you showed analytical thinking. Those days are gone. The questions are complex and they're challenging. Behavioral interviews are used because they're based on the premise that past behaviors predict future behaviors. Research has shown that they're more accurate at predicting candidates' ability to perform the job than traditional interview styles. And these interview questions are very carefully designed. As I said before, gone are the days of, tell me a time you demonstrated flexibility. Um, they're going to ask questions and they want specific answers with details. And I'm going to teach you how to weave in as many competencies as you can. And often I find that people uh, are not successful because Everyone brings their own unique knowledge and experience, and everyone's got, you know, some complexities in their history. And so it's not something that you can wing. You really need to prepare. Some very, very, very basic articulation tips are, you know, when did it happen? Who was involved? Can you include measurables? Uh, can you articulate the story vividly? Do people actually know what happened? And I say, do people actually know what happened? Because sometimes when I hear a client answers, I'm left guessing. I don't know. What does it mean if somebody's angry? That's something that 
is different to me is different than you. You've got to really articulate it. You know, all too often people contacting me after they have failed an interview and I hear their answer and I'm able to immediately tell them why and then they know. So it's better just to prepare. Why leave this to chance? And as your interview coach, I'm going to share with you a memory cue that I have created. Uh, my clients use it and it's tried, tested, and it works. And it also helps to reduce your anxiety and stop you from skipping all over the place in your answer. And the style of coaching that I use helps you to have a flexible mindset so that no matter what question they ask you, you're going to be able to retrieve an example from your brain and articulate it so that you're actually answering the question. For example, the world around us is changing and the challenges we face are increasingly complex. The pandemic is a prime example. And I'm going to teach you how to find examples where you've been adaptable, innovative and forward thinking. The interviewers want to hear that you're open and positive about change and that you can anticipate the changing needs of the community. And I'm going to help you develop answers to show that you have done this in the past and you can continue to do this. In the world today, with all the challenges that we're facing, you also need to demonstrate that you're solution focused. And working in emergency services, whether it be fire, police, ambulance, dispatch, special constable corrections, or CBSA, it requires teamwork. This photo is perfect. Together, everyone achieves more. And teamwork certainly is not about, you know, working with your friends, working with your favorite people. It's about learning to provide solutions to complex issues while working with interdisciplinary professionals or people that you've just met. And it's no secret that community and volunteer work hold immense value. But you've got to be more specific than that. They want to know about times where you actually made a difference, provided exceptional service, uh, you know, tried to improve. And while all volunteer work is different, um, they're also looked at differently. For example, think about what you have in terms of transferable skills when you work one-on-one -on -one over a prolonged period of time with an at-risk youth versus standing at a traffic stop at a charity run. And also be careful not to confuse community work with volunteer work. Volunteer work is self-initiated. For example, if your school requires you to do a community placement, you're told you have to do that to graduate, so it's not true volunteer work. And in your preparation, think about your ability and times that you've demonstrated the ability to lead with emotional intelligence. How are you aware of how you communicate with other people? Are you inclusive? And when working in emergency services, you're typically helping people who are having struggles. Have you been able to demonstrate the ability to guide others through stressful situations? And without a doubt, you have numerous accomplishments buried inside, just waiting to be uncovered. And through the interview coach, I will help you come up with a straightforward, understandable strategy that will enable you to articulate these achievements in an interview. And this results in you gaining confidence. And in the end, my goal is to help you to learn how to structure your answer. This will then help to reduce your interview anxiety. 
And it's also important, learn to not sound detached and mechanical. Memorizing is not a good strategy. And your interview answer needs to be a conversation. It's not a rehearsed answer. They don't want a mechanical response. You know, some answers are short and sweet, while others will have twists and turns. And thank you so much for listening in. I hope that these little tidbits of information helped you. And I look forward to coaching you through your interview process.